Hello and welcome to the Martini Shot, home of movie reviews and movie themed cocktails. My name is Brandon. Before we get into the review of Monkey Man, how about a drink? Introducing Hanuman's Punishment. This will be a bright, sunny, slightly spicy cocktail that we're gonna be building in a shaker, so go ahead and grab that. Let's first start with some lemon juice at 3 fourths ounces, followed by some mango juice at one ounce. And next we're gonna be using a homemade turmeric and ginger simple syrup. I'll go ahead and put the measurements for the ingredients up here on screen. It's pretty much how you would make normal simple syrup with just a few added ingredients. And once you've made that syrup, you're gonna be using 3 fourths ounces. Finally, for our alcohol, first we're gonna be starting with some elderflower liqueur at half an ounce, and then two ounces of tequila, I'm gonna be using a Reposado. Once you got everything in that shaker, throw some ice in there and shake to chill. Once you're done shaking, go ahead and strain that over some fresh ice in a rocks glass that's rimmed with both sea salt and cayenne pepper. And then for our garnish, we're gonna be using a mint sprig as well as a little lemon disc cut in the shape of the sun. There you go, now you have Hanuman's Punishment. Like I said, this cocktail is very bright, sunny. It really pops thanks to the inclusion of the mango juice and the lemon juice. It's not overly sweet, and on the back end, you kind of get this nice little subtle burn from that turmeric ginger syrup. But if you're wanting something with a little bit more upfront spice, I would definitely recommend doing the salt and cayenne pepper rim. Really adds a nice punch that really pairs well alongside that mango flavor. There's a slight bit of herbaceousness coming from that elderflower liqueur, but it's not too overpowering. You can definitely taste that tequila, but it doesn't have that aggressive bite that usually comes with tequila cocktails. Like I said, these bright flavors really do pop in this cocktail, and that little hint of spice on the back end adds a very welcome punch that I really, really dig in a cocktail like this. Now that we have our drink, let's get right into the review. For our second monkey-themed film of the year, we have Monkey Man, the directorial debut of Dev Patel, who also stars in the film. It's the story of a young man in India who plots his revenge on the men that destroyed his village and killed his mother right in front of him. May not sound like the most original of stories, but Monkey Man is proof that you can do a lot with simple stories when there's a strong enough creative voice behind it. This is a stellar debut for Patel, who illustrates both competence and style in the director's chair while also managing to pull off some phenomenal phenomenal stunt work as the titular man. The film makes use of creative camera work, choreography, and needle drops to make this a mostly exhilarating revenge trip. Its pacing sometimes feels a bit uneven, and you may be surprised to find that it isn't as non-stop action as you might have thought, yet Patel's voice shines through tremendously, delivering on a super fun action film that shows even us scrawny kids can kick some ass if we punch enough bags of rice. Pulling double duty as both director and star is no easy feat, unless your name is Neil Breen, who often pulls and tuple duty on his films. But for a first time outing, Dev Patel shows a lot of confidence in illustrating this messy, high octane aura not too dissimilar from a Safdie Brothers joint. High caffeinated camera work and editing dominate the film, often pushing in uncomfortably close to its subjects to amplify the film's white knuckle energy. As a star, we already knew he had the chops from films like Slumdog Millionaire to personal favorites like The Green Knight. But as an action star, this is new territory for him, one that he has absolutely embraced to the fullest extent. Patel isn't playing around as the one known as Kid, Bobby, and the Monkey Man. He's ferocious in his drive to see the ones who wronged him hurt, willing to take a truckload of punishment if it means getting closer to his goal. He's one of those action MCs who actually spends a good chunk of the film getting the snot beat out of him, only for him to eventually rise to his true potential later on and absolutely decimate those in front of him. His underdog story is framed by the political political climate around him, living in the slums while the rich continue to bulldoze their way over their homes and control them through power, money, and religious zealotry. While the film never really gets deeper than that, it still is always refreshing when an action film makes an attempt to say something even if it's a bit surface level. In his journey of revenge, Patel's character meets and occasionally fights some fairly entertaining characters. There's Alfonso, a short-statured gangster who befriends Patel while he's using the fake name Bobby, and Queenie, his foul-mouthed boss and owner of the high-class brothel at which he is employed. 
Eventually, Patel finds sanctuary in a Hijra commune, which is a group of transgender men and women who are also being targeted by the groanly hostile politics of the country. I think this is one of the better examples of trans representation in film, especially in the illustration of their beliefs and lifestyles being tied to the following of their deity, Ardenerish Vara, a being of both genders. It's a super fascinating piece of culture in an already culturally rich film to the point that I wish they played a more integral role in the story, which could have easily given this film ample uniqueness in the action genre. At the top of the monkey's hit list is police chief Rana Singh and Baba Shakti, two men who played a role in the destruction of Patel's village. Both are figureheads for political corruption, Rana showing excessive use of his status as police chief to get what he wants, and Shakti, who hides behind the guise of a religious prophet, to slither his way into the ears of the country's most powerful individuals. They're certainly easy to hate, with Rana perhaps getting the most bad blood between him and our hero. Shakti's big bad status unfortunately keeps his role in the story as more of a background element, as his power and influence is often illustrated through cutaways that don't exactly tie themselves to Patel super strongly. It does make their eventual confrontation feel a bit lukewarm, even though you're looking forward to seeing him getting his comeuppance. Since the first trailer, many have compared this film to John Wick for its Smash Mouth style of action, and for the most part, that's a fair assessment. Yet I was surprised to find that Monkey Man is not as action-centric as the John Wick franchise, with there being only about three or so big action sequences in the film. That's not necessarily a bad thing, as it gives room to allow the main character to grow and evolve to complete his mission. However, that does leave the pacing a bit lopsided. The first act of this film manages to be super energetic and fast-paced, leading into the film's first big fight sequence. Once the second act rolls around, though, the brakes really get pumped. The third act delivers on the big brawl out you're hoping for, but this steep drop in energy definitely drags the film a bit in the middle. A slightly shorter film could have potentially made this work, but these two hours aren't always as rich and as exciting as they should be. Even still, those handfuls of action we get are a ton of fun. This is where Patel's competence really shines through, managing to craft hard-hitting and grounded fight sequences that take advantage of each location and its surroundings. They manage to be bloody and brutal, while the camera work and editing both reflect that energy while also not completely overdoing it. I do have some issues with the technicals of some of these scenes. While I wouldn't say the camera work is as egregiously shaky as some other films, it does render some moments a color blur where you aren't fully aware of place in those moments. Additionally, there are some occasionally jarring instances of cuts when one character hits another. These jump cuts aren't a huge deal and may not even be noticed by many, but for me, it does kind of interrupt the fluidity of these scenes. Despite these small complaints, these fight sequences absolutely deliver on everything I could want, often accompanied by some pretty fun needle drops of varying genres. That trippy remix of Somebody to Love by Jefferson Airplane was chef's kiss. Beautiful. Dev Patel is working on another level for this first time action debut. And what a monumental feat this was to make from breaking his hand and toes, causing him to completely rework some fight scenes, to cameras themselves breaking, to threats of funding being pulled, to the horror of having this unceremoniously dumped onto Netflix before Jordan Peele swooped in and gave this a theatrical release. Like the story, this film is an underdog story in itself and one I had a blast watching. While the narrative is pretty straightforward and the pacing occasionally dips too harshly, this is still a super satisfying, stylish piece of action cinema that delivers on the brutality we've come to enjoy, while also displaying an earnest showcase of India's culture and political climate. It's safe to say Patel went bananas on this one, and I for one am looking forward to the next opportunity he goes apeshit. For my rating, I'm giving this film three and a half tuk-tuks out of five. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Martini Shot. If you saw Monkey Man, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. If you like what you saw here and would like like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me across all social media accounts. Those links are down in the description below. And if you enjoy movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to check out my website, martinishot.blog. Until next time, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Live deliciously, but please remember to drink responsibly.